Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Have you ever used the Continue With Google button to log in to an app or website? This is an example of single sign-on, or SSO, and it uses an API to access basic account information from your existing Google account. In fact, there's a whole ecosystem of third-party apps that request API access to Google user data, like email and calendar apps, document editors that save to Google Drive, and add-ons that work with Google Docs, Slides, and Forms. When a user clicks to install a third-party app, for example, the popular Zoom Meetings app, they are presented with a prompt that details the account access permissions that installation is authorizing. Here we see that Google, or excuse me, here we see that Zoom Meetings is requesting permissions to access the Google Calendar API, the Gmail API, and to connect to an external service. Despite the many benefits, granting programmatic access to one's online, online account can pose security and privacy risks. Google provides the apps with access to your account webpage to help users manage their apps. The page lists all the third-party apps that have been authorized to access a user's Google account via Google APIs. If you click on an app, it will expand to show you the permissions details, the date the access was granted, and a, there is a button to remove access. Our study explores how users consider the security and privacy of third-party API access to their Google accounts given the disclosure and control mechanisms currently available. With that in mind, we set up three research questions. First, we wanted to find out why users authorize or remove API access, and this includes measuring users' existing SSO and third-party app use. Second, we wanted to understand users' perceptions and concerns regarding these apps. And third, we wanted to know how users would like to manage their existing API authorizations. Our study design consists of two online surveys. The first survey focused on asking participants to recall prior experiences with third-party apps and SSOs, and recruitment for both surveys was done via Prolific during the month of April 2021. We invited back 399 participants that have active Google accounts with SSOs and third-party apps to return for the second survey, and 214 of them completed the survey. We created a custom browser extension that collected in the wild data about users' actual SSOs and authorized apps. The extension was also used to display participants' specific third-party apps directly in the survey so we could ask questions about these apps. Um, we'll now take a look at some of our um, key results from the study. I will start by presenting why users authorize API access uh, and the measurements of users' existing SSO and third-party app use. So um, results from the first survey um, found that almost 90% of our participants recall using a, um, using a Google account to sign into a third-party app or service, and over half recall granting third-party app access to their account. With the data collected from our browser extension, we found that 86% of participants had at least one SSO linked to their Google account, and of those who had at least one SSO, the average number of SSOs per, per participant was 13. So not only do many participants use SSOs, but they also use quite a few. And we observed a total of uh, 1,010 unique SSOs. Here's a list of the top 10 most authorized SSOs among our survey respondents. And we noticed that six of the top 10 are authorized to access more than basic account information, showing that SSOs are used uh, for more than just account access. For example, um, Alexa and Microsoft connecting to Google Calendar. Um, using the data collected from our browser extension, we found that 67% of participants had at least one third-party app with Google account access. And of those um, who have at least one third-party app, the average number of third-party apps per participant was uh, six. And we observed uh, a total of 455 unique third-party apps. Here's the list of top 10 most authorized third-party apps among survey respondents. And based on the date authorized, um, the, on average, apps have been authorized for over 285 days, with the maximum uh, being authorized for almost seven years. So these um, third-party apps stay on users' accounts for a long time. Uh, now I will present the results of users' perceptions and concerns regarding apps with API access to their accounts. 
We presented participants with their newest and oldest apps by install date, along with a random app they had installed. When asked if they were concerned about the app having account access, a quarter of participants agreed or strongly agreed that they were concerned. And when asked if the access was beneficial, over half, agree, half agreed or strongly agreed that it, was that it was beneficial. When asked to explain their reasons for concern, common response themes included concerns about access to personal or sensitive information, unnecessary access, and access to contacts and email. Participant 61, responded, uh, resp when responding to the Quora app, said, I didn't know that they could see and download my contacts. That is a bit concerning because I don't know what they do with that data. And participant 63, when explaining their concern about the boomerang for Gmail app, said, as with any app that requires having access to send emails, I'm always worried about something unauthorized being sent. Among the six most prevalent permissions, participants reported view personal information and modify contacts to be the most concerning. While participants were less concerned with broader permissions, such as modify Google Calendar. The relative lack of concern with these permissions could be attributed to a transfer um, of trust from, uh, to Google uh, from third party apps. Uh, for example, participant 117 said, uh, it must be OK since it partnered with Google. And participant 161 added, I generally trust anything that leads to that Google SSO page. Transferring trust to Google is misplaced and concerning because Google is only providing the API capability and may not be aware of how third-party services use Google accounts they have access to. We also asked participants to report the necessity of each permission uh, for the app to function. Among the six most prevalent permissions, 61% of participants reported the permission to view personal information to be not necessary or only slightly necessary. And 41% of participants reported the permission to modify contacts to be not necessary or only slightly necessary. Participants found permissions such as modify Google Calendar and, uh, Gmail, and view Gmail addresses uh, necessary for app functionality. And lastly, I will present the results on how users would like to manage their existing API authorizations. We found that people never or rarely review single sign-on or third-party app authorizations. And this can lead to concerns about stale account access. Participant 137 complained about their Adidas training app. I have removed the app from my phone, and I don't see why the app still has to have these permissions. Participants were concerned because they equated removal of mobile apps on their phone with the removal of API authorizations, and were surprised when that wasn't the case. Their account with that app continues on, and that is what has the API access. And participant 16 said of the Chatbooks app, I don't use it anymore, and they still have access to my photos. When taking the second survey, we had participants interact with their own apps with access to your account page. And almost half reported that they would change um, their settings after completing the survey. And 71% reported that they would review third-party apps in six months. When asked what they would change or review, common response themes included removing account access from unused apps and changing specific permission access. Participant 23 said, I would definitely remove many of the apps I do not use anymore. They absolutely do not need to be linked to my Google account anymore. And when asked what new features they would like to help manage app access, common new feature requests included detailed permissions explanations, data access logs, and permissions level control. For example, participant 17 says, I think it would be useful for them to show when I last used an app and when the app last used my data. And participant 156 responded, auto removal of apps after three months of no use. This research identifies the need for limiting account access for unused, forgotten, or removed third-party apps. Study participants expressed the most concern about access to personal information, like email addresses. However, they were less concerned with broader access to calendars, emails, or cloud storage. Some suggested design improvements include the ability to designate specific account data as private and inaccessible, fine-grained permission controls, improvements to the permissions descriptive text, 
and adding a recent activity log that includes data access details. Thank you, and I would be happy to take any questions.